are going to talk with Anjali Nair. She's an immigrant coach, and this is for all South Asian women. Ah, she's here. So let us ask her to join. And Urvi is also joining with us. Ah, let's invite them. Center request. Excited, guys. Hi, Urvi. Hi, Uri. <laughs> they have to you. my mentor. <laughs> Excited to talk with Anjali. Let's invite her to. Yeah, okay. I have sent her the request. Asia is here. Hi. Hi. Anjali, you're here. I have sent you a request. Can you see it? Very excited. How was your long weekend, Urvi? <laughs> it was good. It was good. We went to camping and yeah, it was good. Hi, Hi. Anjali. Hi. She's here. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, excellent. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for our chat today. Oh, we are, we thank you for your time. Thank you, Anjali. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay, so let's start with you. Tell us about you. Where were you born? Where were you raised? And how did you come to be here? Sure. I uh, wanted to say a quick hello to everyone who just joined. Uh, Everyone who is a fan of Desi Girl magazine, this is a hello from Desi Girl in US. My name is Anjali Nair. I moved to the United States after getting married. I am born and raised in Mumbai. I am a Malayali and uh, my family lives there. And I moved here after I got married. I am currently in Tampa, Florida with my husband and my puppy. Cool. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, like. Um, I don't know much about puppy, but I would ask, how old is your puppy? He's going to be one next oh. month. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> do you speak Malayalam? I do. I, in fact, it's funny. I did not have a lot of Malu friends growing up uh, living in Mumbai. I was surrounded by Gujaratis and Marathis. So they are one of my closest friends, the ones I have. So... Uh, if you spoke to me a few years ago before I got married, maybe my Marathi and Gujarati was better than Malayalam. <laughs> but now it's the reverse. Um, after getting married, um, we speak more in Malayalam. So yes, I am much confident speaking in Malayalam now. Are you Malayali too? No, I'm Tamil, Anjali. Okay. <laughs> I don't my husband I speaks very good Tamil. Oh, nice. <laughs> We are from neighboring states. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like we have a lot of diversity with the language and with the culture and everything. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, our uh, next question is, uh, how was life in the U.S. Uh, when you first moved here? How was everything like uh, before you got your work permit? Sure. Um, so... For me, uh, I did not do a lot of research. I was so excited that I found a life partner I get along with through an arranged marriage route. I was just super excited that I'm going to marry a person I fell in love with, that the geography did not matter. So uh, the only thought that came to my head is, oh my God, I have to leave India and that was the thought bothering me, but I did not, you know, think ahead and be like, okay, let me find out where am I moving? What should I be doing there? What are some things I should carry with me? I think the excitement overpowered the nervousness. And I feel a lot of new brides may feel this way. Um, so after I moved here, that is when a lot of reality struck, right? Because in my head, I imagined every state in US to look like Manhattan because I just watched uh, sitcoms and movies and I was like, oh, it's going to be, you know, fun. There's a lot of freedom. Uh, it's, it's a developed nation. So, you know, there won't be much trouble. I will figure things out. Um, so 
so to tell you two words, I was naive and also uh, confident, super confident to pack my bags and move to a new country. And uh, I also heard that, you know, this has been happening over the years. A lot of women move to a new place after getting married. So how hard can it get, right? So I played along and when I moved here, I realized that, okay, every city looks different and it has no resemblance with Manhattan whatsoever. So that was reality number one. Two, I was home alone for several months until I got my work permit, which I was not prepared for. I knew it's going to happen, but mentally you're still not ready. When it actually happens, that's when you're like, oh, so I have to stay at home and be a housewife until I get a job and then my life starts. So I started creating barriers for myself in those you know, few months or whatever time I had where I could actually prepare myself, but I kept, you know, uh, overthinking and blaming like, oh, why did I move here? What was I thinking? Things are so hard. Nobody helps, no one to talk to. Uh, yeah, so that was my initial uh, phase through which I went. Of course, things were pretty rosy too, because when you're married, you have the support of your husband, you can lean back on. I did not have the stress of, you know, oh, where is the next paycheck coming from? Or where do I live? You know, those basic things were already sorted out because I moved after marriage. Uh, but what do I do next from here? That was the biggest concern. And obviously, you I did not find anyone to talk to except for my husband. I wasn't even active on social media back then. And I kept like, I would search on Google, okay, uh, what are some things uh, a newcomer in US should do? What should I learn? But believe it or not, I would only read like sad stories like, oh, be prepared to never work in your life. Be prepared to, you know, be a housewife rest of your life. Things are different here. You find a Desi group and hang out with them. So all kinds of stories which I could not see myself doing. And I, I was like, okay, let's get off from here and figure things out as soon as possible because I can't live like this. <laughs> <laughs> I can identify completely with you, Anjali. The same boat. <laughs> the same yeah. boat, actually. <laughs> same, right? Because I, when we move from um, India, and I can speak uh, in, on behalf of other uh, women like us, when they move here, they are professionals already. They've either done their bachelor's or master's, MBA, PhD, you know, whatever. And they have big dreams. Like, we have big dreams when we, uh, you know, when we, when we, not, not just for a marriage or moving to a different country, but in general, we have ambition to do things. And when that does not happen, that's when, you know, things don't work out the way we planned. And uh, that's the phase that I feel everyone goes through in yeah. their first two years. That's why it's amazing how you came up with Daisy Girl in the US. Uh, what was the spark? How did you start? Uh, my failures, <laughs> to be very honest with you, uh, just seeing myself not able to adapt, not able to assimilate with life in US made me realize that I am not the only one. There are thousands of women just like me, better than me, who are going through these issues. And we have no one to talk to. We have no one to reach out to. We have no one to go and ask questions and get answers. Um, and I wanted to change that. Because there are a lot of policies, a lot of resources, a lot of guidance on how to migrate, how to migrate to the US. So that journey is smooth. But once you reach here, what do I do next? There is no road built to that. And I wanted to build that road because I'd already fallen so many times that I realized instead of taking so many years to figure the basic of the things out, why not create a platform where I share all the necessary things required for any new immigrant? And that makes their life easier. 
of course you are going to struggle a little bit because you know any any newcomer would do but if i give you a step wise plan wouldn't your life be easier that that was a whole genesis of why a platform like this needed to exist and i wish i had found someone like me when i moved here things would have been way different <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that was the birth story of a desi girl in US. We started last year. Um, my first idea was to write articles and blogs so that I can explain things better. But then it went through a radical shift where I got so much good feedback. So many women reached out to me. I then realized that okay, we need a bigger platform, a bigger community to include all the immigrant women. And I say women because. women are facing the problem more than men there are lesser men who come here on a dependent visa so for that reason i feel like the challenges that women go through are more unique as compared to men and that's why it is desi girl in us that must be really fulfilling huh? <laughs> so far so good <laughs> no that's uh, perfectly right because uh, Uh, i know me and nirguna both uh, moved here on h4 and we have been in the same boat and it was like definitely i moved before 7 years and there was nothing like that and you feel alone no matter like you have your partner with you but you don't have you know the person who match your frequency and you want someone else a, a friend just yeah. to share your thoughts Yeah. So yeah, definitely the Desi Girl platform is uh, really helping other women. So, uh, uh, do you have a team to manage this platform? How you do it? Hopefully, one day. <laughs> <laughs> As of now, it's a one-woman show. I am running this platform since last year solo, and uh, hopefully, in the coming months, I get to start a team and I get to expand. uh this platform to more women who can come and join me to take this to the next level but as of now it is me working i don't know 12 hours a day trying to manage a day job and running a a new uh, you know as a new entrepreneur i am i am learning things on the go so it's weekends late nights and lunch breaks this is my lunch break <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> That's so inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> so, are uh, you mentioned about your day job, right? You are in mm -hmm. marketing. So, did you do an MBA here? And for those who want to follow in your footsteps, what do you do in that job, and what qualifications do we need to get there? Sure. So, I my background was bachelor's in pharmacy. which i did not like <laughs> and then i moved on to do mba in marketing which i loved so both of this was done back in india i worked in india for a few years um for a pharmaceutical company and i worked there as a brand manager i started from sales and then started getting promoted and that was my last position i held um after moving here i moved to florida and florida is not the best market for pharma headquarters and like i said because i did not do my research i did not think of that possibility so one of the first challenges i faced was oh i have to transition from a place where i thought i had a foundation to start something totally fresh so believe it or not even though i had a few years of experience i had to start entry level all over again but the advantage was because i had an mba from a reputed institute um that counted my experience counted and that is why i could at least get my first entry level job at a startup in marketing um the struggle i had to land that job is a totally different story but i'm going to answer your question that you asked so in my current role i work as a marketing planner and program specialist which falls under digital marketing and uh i did not study digital marketing in my mba because in india back then digital marketing had just started so it was not even a part of our syllabus so everything that i learned was through experience in india in us and then by doing some courses so i had to upskill myself in order to land a job here because i realized that 
um, I was missing a few skills that were needed to land a job in marketing. And it is all the more difficult for a person from a non-technical, non-STEM background to get their first job in the US because a lot of non-technical jobs are uh, taken by the locals and they are much better at it than us. So for me, my challenge was proving that I am capable to do this job as good as the locals over here. So that's why it took me a long time to um, get into marketing or a non-technical field, like you say. But um, as of now, I am really enjoying my role here. I work in customer acquisition and uh, my role is to bring in new customers to the company by doing digital marketing campaigns. So that is my role uh, in my nine to five. That's awesome. So you mentioned something about the courses that you did here. Do we know, uh, you know, the online courses or are, are they valued by the employers and did you do online course or did you go in person? So that is a great question because I get this question asked a lot like Anjali, what specific course should we do? Can you tell me the name of the course, how much it costs and will that guarantee me a job? The answer to all three is no. <laughs> it does not guarantee a job even if I tell you a specific course to do. Um, the course is for you to understand, to learn, and also to be confident when you face a job interview. But what employers are looking for is not only your knowledge, but have you worked in that field before? Have you done any projects before? Have you even done an internship before? Do you have any experience at all? So one thing that I always explain to my mentees or anyone who comes to me is, in America, experience is valued more than your degree, your courses, or even your MBA for that matter. So I would recommend to take up courses and certifications to brush yourself up with the new skills, new trends that is coming in, but make sure you at least grab a couple of projects and show that you did work in that field to show you have some experience and that builds your credibility much more. So that is the combination that we want. Uh, learn and also implement. Yeah, of course, that's true. So uh, like uh, uh, besides uh, uh, your job and everything, as you mentioned earlier, right? When you moved here, you find it lonely because you don't have friends and all. So yeah. uh, how we can, like, uh, uh, do you, uh, sh uh, would you like to share a method or a way how we can make friends over here and how we can build our own tribe? Yeah, yeah. This is a great question because it is one of the things that is on a very low priority for a lot of women. Because if you move here as a student or as a, a wife, you either form your own friend circle with other students or you consider your husband to be your best friend and you make friends with his friends. But ultimately down the line, you miss having your own group. Like at least that one person who you can pick up the phone and call. Right? One person you can vent yeah. out and say, <laughs> why am I doing this? Or, you know, please help me with this. Or I'm going through this. Um, if you don't have that one person or a group of people who you are sharing that same wavelength with, who understand you, then it gets very lonely, very difficult. Um, I'll be super honest. First year in the US, I made one friend, one. <laughs> and I couldn't even maintain that friendship because uh, she moved to a different state. And that also keeps happening. You will never find one person who is with you just like you had in school or college, right? So right. I think two things that I always suggest is one, don't hold a friendship just because of the physical proximity to you. Oh, she lives close by. Oh, she lives right next to me. Oh, we speak the same language. We are going to be best friends. It might not work out. <laughs> So when you make a new friend, don't keep any barriers of age, language, uh, cultural background, ethnicity, you know, remove all of that and look for compatibility. 
look for understanding look if this is a genuine person who is listening who is there for you who is teaching you something new you know look for a tribe like that and it's not easy making friends as an adult as a woman in a new country is a completely different ball game so even if you have one good friend you know thank your stars that okay you are at least doing something right um so last year i started a friendship group on facebook so i wanted to bring back the essence of facebook again which is to make friends so i've created i think now it's close to 500 women they've all moved to the us and that is a common thread with all of them and they're from 20 different states in uh, us and they are all starting to connect with each other finding out okay what do i have things in common and then you can you know message each other and also use this platform to ask questions it's a safe place because no one can judge you because we've all been through it right so uh, if anyone's listening right now who is looking for a tribe like that message me so that i can get you on to our facebook friendship group and uh the last thing i would suggest is if you are still um hesitant to even start a conversation or if you're an introvert or if you feel that i'm i'm scared to even talk to a non indian you know um message me again because i have a toolkit that i've prepared only for this group of people where i make it easier for you to find and make new friends in the form of a friendship toolkit so that is another suggestion i have nice thank you for that thank you for that facebook group you mentioned i'm sure you're going to get a lot of member requests <laughs> <laughs> happy to more the merrier <laughs> <laughs> so so what are some of the activities that you suggest for women that are new to this country you know even to build themselves professionally or mm -hmm. to build a friend circle whatever you know or keep themselves engaged not go mad <laughs> simply put yes very necessary <laughs> because it's easy to lose your mind here <laughs> okay so i would suggest if you are new to the country within your first year uh, the first few things that you do is first mentally accept that you are in a new place everything is new and come with an open mind that you are ready to learn and you know figure things out as they come so first is acceptance and ready to adapt second start understanding the basic chores you need to do in your day to day life so some women are really good with you know cooking and cleaning shopping all of that there are other women who've never done that in their life before so for them they will have to watch youtube videos call their mom ask a neighbor you know whatever or ask their husband to do it but you have to figure those things out because initially it would take me 4 hours to cook a meal because i'd never cooked a meal before and after that i would finish everything in 2 hours and then i'm like what do i do for the rest of the day i can't keep watching netflix right and that's when you're like okay i need to do more things so the second thing i would do is figure out your chores you know figure out a routine for yourself even if you are not dressing up and going to work make a routine for yourself okay i wake up i cook i talk to my parents and kind of create that routine for the entire day where you are not only keeping yourself busy but you're also learning something new and by learning something new my third point is try to understand the american culture so it could be by watching movies it could be by going out and talking to your neighbor it could be by going to a coffee shop and striking a conversation with just the barista um so try acclimating yourself try immersing yourself in the american culture and life because that is going to come handy to you when you step into the outside world and in terms of skill building i know we want to get that job as soon as possible because that's our number one priority but before that try to do these initial things where you find a hobby find a friend find uh, not find but get your driver's license there are all these initial things that i highly recommend you to do even before you think of a job search strategy 
because this will help you build yourself as a person who is much more ready to enter corporate America. So those are a few things I would recommend you do in your first couple of years so that you are kind of independent and you are not very dependent on your spouse for everything. You can do a few things by yourself. And then when it is time for you to restart your career, focus all your energies just on that. So that's how I break it down. Part one, do these things until it's time for you to figure out your career. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> I hope that's helpful. Absolutely. Yes, it is. <laughs> And because you uh, like, um, I know it, uh, I have personal experience. Uh, you know, we uh, we wait till the uh, getting a work permit, and then we try to figure out like I should get a license. How would I travel to workplace? And just then, uh, you know, you feel stressed because you have to figure out a lot of things together. So yeah. yeah, your suggestion is very good that do it step by step rather than waiting for till end. <laughs> Exactly. And if you wait till the end to do all of this, then like you said, it gets really stressful. You, you would be like, should I make my resume or should I, you know, uh, practice for driving or should I practice my communication skills or should I start applying for jobs? There are a lot of things that you have to do. And then you might feel those eight hours a day, which you get away from your husband is not enough because you have so many things to do and the time is so less. Once you get your EAD, it's a time bomb. You have to find your job as soon as possible. The longer you wait, the longer the gap you have, which you can't explain. So that's why I highly recommend these things to, to be done and dusted before even EAD comes into the picture. Right. That's awesome. Actually, that makes complete sense, Anjali. <laughs> you know, we need to have something to fall back on. Even if we go for a job, something mm -hmm. that's concrete, you know, a friend, a hobby, something that will keep you sane, even when you get busy, you know, so that you don't forget yourself, lose yourself in this America, <laughs> new world, right? <laughs> and exactly. yeah, I had another question. Like, uh, so you mentioned your struggle before getting a job, right? So uh, we always uh, compromise our compromise for an entry level job right we uh, we we need an experience as you said so mm -hmm. after uh, getting an experience when do you decide that you have to move on and get a, a better paid job you know from an entry level job when do you think you will be ready um so once you start with your entry level job at least get a few months to a year of experience because most probably an entry level job doesn't pay you as much but once you get that experience, I think a few months to a year is a good point to um, revisit your skills and look at a job description or a role that is one step higher to you. Um, and you could either look in your own company where you are working right now, or you could look outside and see if there are similar firms who are hiring right now and there is no absolutely no harm in giving an interview and giving it a try. If it works out, that means you're ready. If it doesn't work out, go back and see what were some questions you couldn't answer, work on that further, and then probably apply again. Right. But yeah, a, a good timeline would be a few months to a year is, is a good timeline. Nice. Thank you for that. <laughs> of course. It was very illuminating, the session was. Urvi, do you have any other question for her? <laughs> no, I think like uh, I wanted to know the basics, you know, because yeah. uh, uh, we all have been there and uh, there are still like, uh, yeah, we do have an online community, but there are still few women, you know, they just have a different world and they are scared and they might uh, don't find anything. So yeah, uh, these plat uh, platforms are really good for them. Yes, yes, definitely. And um, I think I see a question or two in our chat. So if you could look at it and let me know. I see one question from Priyadarshini, but if there are any other questions, let me know. Yeah. Um, Someone asked you to mention the group name, Facebook group name. I think oh. many are asking. Yeah. Sorry. So I will just type it out. It is called Desi Girls in US, G-I-R-L-S. 
and you will find three questions which you need to answer before you join the group. And I am happy to uh, talk to each one of you who is joining the group and I'd like to welcome you. So yes, that is the name of the group. And if there are no other questions, I'd like to answer Priya Darshini's question. Uh, yeah. Wait, I can't find it anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I found it. Do you want me to tell you the question? Sure, yes. Yeah. yeah. How are we supposed to gain experience through project or internship to land a job? Mm -hmm. given that we are in H4 visa. Awesome. Okay. So since you are on H4 visa and you are not legally allowed to work for anyone by projects or internships, I mean, it could differ from the field that you are in. So for example, if you're from a non-technical field, if you're from marketing, architecture, design, any of these fields, you can always create your own portfolio and create self projects, which you can showcase through your website or your portfolio. So that is one suggestion for people from the non-technical field. For people from the technical field, it's even easier because if you are into developing systems, softwares or platforms, it's easy for you to team up with another person who's in the same field and build something together. If it's a prototype or if it's a testing model or anything. So create your own project. So that way you're not working for anyone and you still get to show you've done something. And I teach this it in depth in my career toolkit where I teach how to get volunteering opportunities and internships when you are on H4 visa. So um, that is an excellent resource because I also share some portals where you can apply and start getting those opportunities. So message me, um, I can share the link to the career toolkit. And if you have any further questions, feel free to DM me and we can talk. Yeah, of course, that's good. And uh, in Desi Girl magazine also, we are hiring volunteers. So like if any of you want to uh, improve skills or learn new skills and DM us or DM Anjali, that is fine too. Yes, yes. Always uh, open to referring people to any new opportunities that are out there. Um, and I see another question. Uh, I think it's Priya. She's asking, is there a possibility of getting an entry level project management position after eight years? It is totally possible as long as you show that your skills are still relevant. If there have been any updates in the field of project management and if you have updated yourself, then you are in a good position to go and apply for jobs in that field. Entry level should not be a problem. If you need my help, I am always available via DMs. So feel free to reach out. Thank you, Anjali. Thank you so much for such a wonderful session. I'm sure a lot of people have connected here. Even uh, we'll connect more with your Facebook group too. So thank you. You have been a godsend for so many people. Some people are uh, telling you that, where were you all these years? Oh, <laughs> yeah. This is the question I asked when I came here. Is there yeah. someone? <laughs> but yes, I am glad uh, that at least uh, I'm able to provide these resources. Um, like I said, it takes me a lot of time and effort to put all this together from my learning and experience. And uh, that's the reason why I am making it a little easier on you so that you don't have to spend that time and effort on research or looking for answers or pulling your hair out because you don't know what to do next. So if I can help you make that process easier, um, message me, connect with me. I am always responding to your questions and I will be more than happy to provide you more resources. And I am cheering you on. I hope uh, we all get our dream jobs and fulfill our American dreams. And thank you so much for having me today. I hope this was a good session for everyone. Thank you, Anjali. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And your lunch break. <laughs> that too. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you get time to have your meal too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you Bye. 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 All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. So, Urvi. Uh, so I think we uh, we have uh, reached out to a lot of people on H4. 
so solidarity is important don't lose yeah. hope guys we are all here for each other so yeah Stay that's strong. true and <laughs> through desi girl magazine we are trying to you know help other women so like if you are looking for a volunteer or internship feel free to uh, email us dm us uh, whatever is comfortable to you and uh, we would love to help you and help you uh, learn new skills so yeah sure thank you urvi thank you so much yeah thank bye. you bye, bye. <laughs>